Do you believe everything you're told on the internet or on TV? And if you don't, as none of us should, how should we decide? Well, I, for one, get most of my information from print media. Welcome to Standard Time, a Eurozine production. This is a talk show with guests from all over Europe. Here we discuss issues that keep us up at night, from Berlin to Gaziantep and well beyond. Today we're talking about whether we should believe what the media say and how we decide whom to trust. Research shows that political fragmentation is constantly rising. So what it means is that we experience less and less of a shared reality across society. Some people are afraid of migrants, others of losing their homes. Some people don't believe COVID exists, and some religiously believe in science and objectivism. Yet others attribute anything they don't understand to aliens. We are the minority today. Subject to contention. All you. <laughs> yeah, all the white, white women. Yeah, you struggle so hard. Mistrust is natural. It's a bit more natural than trust, because we are uh, talking about things that we don't have a direct experience with. Journalism students that are going to be coming out of this school are going to spend the next five years struggling to get a space because they don't have a byline, because you don't recognize their byline, because whatever they say, you're like, oh, you've not worked for a major platform, we cannot trust you. For me, that is a problem even within journalism, and that's what Ombayazi News is saying, no. If you are able to trust the guy who is within your network, you can trust the one who is at the local level. Why do you think I should trust my brother in journalism? He's not a journalist, but he's my brother. I cannot trust him with my journalism. So that is the kind of conversations that I expect newsroom and editors to be able to acknowledge and have. And rather than say, oh, if you're not on my LinkedIn network, I cannot commission you to file a story because I don't trust you. That is bullshit. I'm pretty sure and I know that it's really uh, nowadays is less trust, uh, especially in Syria, because we've grown up on something like this 45, 50 years like this. So changing this mentality, it needs time and it, it needs years. So what I always say and what we believe in our media, that uh, change has to beginning from the bottom, from here, from from our way of thinking, from the mentality. And this has to be really getting trust from the people. Mistrust can be built back through good journalists who are working good and have knowledge on the local level as well, like, like you are. But the audience of CNN would not uh, view the news about Ukraine at all if you don't have the American journalists traveling there and translating what is happening there to the American mindset. And there are many studies from the field that I'm doing research on, conspiracy theories, fake news, that if you just go on and search for the news yourself, you're finally lost in the total false narratives. So I think in defense of mainstream institutions, and I totally agree that they do not always deserve trust. And it's like, it's true in Russia, it's true in Hungary, it's true in Syria. If you trust the uh, authorities, you're stupid. Uh, but in some other environments, I, I think part of the problem with post-truth is that this mistrust have become so endemic that it becomes irrational. Mommy, I want to be a journalist and I said to her, if you say that again, we're going to have a long trouble. <laughs> it's true, I'm being realistic. Yeah. Let's do a fundraising for Tucker Carlson because I think he deserves that. Yeah.